Hi guys, today I would love to show you all my new uh, purchase. I've bought so many stuff, so this is gonna be a massive video haul. So grab a cup of tea and just sit comfortable because it's going to be quite long. And I'm sorry, but this is, uh, as you can have seen in the title, it's going to be about watercolor art supplies and bullet journal uh, supplies. So today, any scrapbooking related stuff, I'm sorry. And since I've been missing <laughs> in the last few months, I would love to give, some, give you some explanation about my behavior. So I'm going to record the video, uh, I guess tomorrow. So in a couple of days, it will be up on my channel where I'm going to explain you what I'm working right now and why I've been missing. So I don't know if you care or not, but I mean, I thought it should be, could be right to give you some kind of explanation. So since it's a huge quantity of material, let's get started with showing everything to you. Let's start with the watercolor. So I've, um, I've been using for a while the uh, PBO, because it's a French brand, so I guess it's pronounced like this. And they are in Godet or Alphpan. And it's really nice even if you have to use them uh, for sketching while you are traveling. Um, they are really nice and really easy to use, but I would love to um, try something uh, higher in, in quality. So I thought that I, um, I want to try the Cotman from Winsor & Newton, that it's their student line. So basically there is the student line that it's a, <clears throat> a medium high quality. And then there is the professional line that it's the top quality. Of course, the professional line, it's super expensive compared to the student line. And I have to say that I have seen so many artists, watercolor artists uh, all over the web that use uh, Cotman without any kind of issue. So I decided to try this brand. Um, and since I have to buy all of them, basically, I prefer to use the tubes because um, I can put different color uh, one next to each other and just easily mix them. So I prefer to buy the tubes. When I went back to Italy for Christmas, I realized that I tried to buy some, uh, but I realized it was like four euros each. So for me, it was super crazy because I like to have the most of the um, color available on my hand. So, I mean, it's like 40 colors, so too much for me, really. And when I went back here in Edinburgh, I did a research on the internet and I found out this great, amazing website that it's Artfox, it's an online shops, shop, and they sell <clears throat> Winsor & Newton, uh, their standard price, it's two uh, pound and 20. And in general, there was on sale for one pound and sixty and sorry and seventy eight each. But there was this uh, offer where if you buy three, you get one for free. So basically, I bought all the color that they had uh, available. Uh, since some of the color was already sold out, I bought the Dailer and Rony Aquafine, and the Aquafine it's the student line of Dailer and Rony. And since I had a few of them. Uh, in, in Godet. I found them really nice to use and so I went for this and I found some that was on the available on the 20 millimeter sides so it's super huge and I guess it lasts me forever so I bought three of them and while I was in Italy I also bought three of these that it's the My Mary it's an Italian um, art supply brand so I don't know if it's available here in the UK or whatever else, but it's really nice to use them. So I found some color and I just tried to decide to try them out. And I'm not going to show you a sampler did right now because otherwise it will take me forever because I bought basically like 39 colors. So I mean, too much time to do it. But I've already did my color chart and, and this is something that I strongly recommend everybody that it's into art of any kind to do a watercolor, uh, sorry, color chart of any <clears throat> paint that you buy because when you see the color in the uh, Godet or in the pan, for example, you can see that there is so much difference between the color you see here and the color you see here. And 
I mean, because the watercolors especially are transparent and are very, very pigmented, so it's really difficult to have a, re a realistic idea just looking through them uh, in their, I mean, wet form. But even if you buy the tubes, I mean, these two colors are totally distance one from each other so it's it's not even close uh in, in color range and it's supposed to be the same color so i mean i don't trust the labels i don't trust uh the the pen itself or just looking at the uh color here i really recommend to do a color chart so i have already used them uh a lot and they are great so if you want to try something that it's a uh, good quality uh not so cheap but not super expensive i recommend you the winter and newton cotman and especially if you are in the uk or i mean i i have seen they ship basically everywhere so the uh, art folks it's a really great website where to grab them so um speaking of watercolor let's move to the watercolor paper so i have uh, bought my first album of this brand the botanical one uh, here in the art shop uh, in Edinburgh. But when I went back for grabbing another one, they had sold out the A5 site. So I searched all over the internet and I found, this is how I found out actually about art folks, because I mean, um, Winter and Newton Cotman line, it's really more easy to find than botanical. So um, I found them, uh, I found it on, on their website and it's an amazing uh, type of paper. I love hot pressed paper, so I'm not going to explain now uh, the difference between hot pressed paper and cold pressed paper. I am a fan of hot pressed paper, even if it's not the most common, because basically uh, a lot of the artists that I follow and that I watch are prefer to use the cold pressed paper, but I love the smoothness and the texture or at least the missing <laughs> of a, a texture of the hot press paper. So, and this one has, so it's ultra smooth. I, it's really the smoothest paper I have ever seen for watercolor. And it's basically like um, Bristol paper. It's super uh, smooth and it's super clear, cause uh, super white, I mean, cause um, generally the watercolor paper, it's a little bit yellowish. I can show you here. So I definitely prefer to have it really white. So this is, uh, this paper, I mean, it's amazing. It's not super expensive because it's 25 sheets. So basically 50 pages and it's like uh, 10 pounds, 12 pounds, depending where you buy it. So on the Artifox website, it's like uh, nine pound and 99 or something. And it's a really great deal. I am going to buy for sure, even the A4 sites, it's 300 grams. Uh, so it's 140 pounds, so it's the perfect, and it's 50% cotton, so really, it's the perfect uh, type of paper for my kind of water coloring, so I love it really much. And another thing that I love about this paper is that uh, this album has the spiral bound, so there is something that I can do with this, and that's this <laughs> trick here, so this is the one that I've already finished. And just for showing you, uh, what I love to do is to um, just put it like this, take it out a little bit, and using some scissor in here, just making some small cap. So I just do, I can just do this, and remove the paper, the single sheets, and move around in the album because I like to have thin stuff all together. So here, there is all my pastry and. Uh, biscuits and this kind of stuff so uh, I like to move them here instead of maybe uh, the Christmas stuff that are over there so if I uh, this way I can just move them basically I turn it in some kind of arc bound system <laughs> disc bound system I don't know why I always end up there uh, so I strongly recommend you this paper if you want to try out it's even uh, quite cheap if you want to buy just the A5 sites and give it a try and another paper I have bought during my holiday, it's this one, uh, it's an Italian brand. So maybe it won't be ever an issue for UK based people, but I, I have no idea if it's uh, easy to find it here or whatever. So I just want to say this for everyone's <laughs> uh, sake. I tried the Magnani, Magnani Portofino paper and 
it's 100% cotton, 300 grams square meter, so it's really good and it's um, hot pressed, so it's very uh, smooth and everything. And it's 20 paper, so 9 by 12 uh, inches. So I mean, even the size was good and the price was price was like 14 euros, so very nice. The block, it's made with uh, the four sides blocked, so it's really nice. But the paper for me it's a nightmare, because if you are the type of artist that can just uh, paint basically without any kind of sketching or drawing, it's super fine. But if you are like me and you need to be some, to do some sketch before and then erase them, it's a mess. Because this paper has this kind of uh, cotton hair that came up. So basically then it totally messed up with the color. When you put up the color, change the way the paper absorbs the color. So for me, it's a total mess. I'm planning to use these probably for things like uh, galaxy or background, things where I don't have to uh, draw something first actually, so just washes of color, this kind of stuff. And it's a shame because, I mean, I had uh, this uh, block from them that uh, my mom gave me, even my mom has this painting bug, and this one is the one for mixed uh, media, so multi-purpose, uh, multi-techniques. And this is a uh, fine grain, it's cold pressed, so I thought that, was be, that, that this one would be not so good for me compared to the other one, but instead, uh, this paper is amazing. I don't have any kind of issue, it works perfectly fine, you can draw and then erase and nothing will happen. So, I love it. The only issue is that it's even yellowish than the other one, and everything is so much more yellowish of my... Uh, um, botanical album but uh, if you have to if you find uh, somewhere the Magnani paper and you want to give it a try uh, I strongly recommend you to buy the one for mixed uh, media techniques and not the one for not the Portofino at least uh, I don't know for if they has other kind of water paper um, blocks I strongly recommend this instead of the, the other one because for me it doesn't work well <laughs> at all <laughs> So another thing that I would love to show you, and it's my last uh, watercolor paper stuff, it's the Moleskin. I bought this through uh, the uh, Florence train station, but uh, you can easily find on the Amazon. And I didn't say this before, I guess, but I have put all the links in the information box. I bought the majority of the stuff from uh, Amazon. Uh, and the other one that I haven't bought from Amazon, uh, like this one, but you can find it on Amazon, so I put the Amazon link on. And so I guess it's really easy to find everything in the description box. So this one is the watercolor album. I have seen so many artists use it, and so I decided to give it a try. And it's pretty um, cheap, it's like 10 pounds or something. This one is the nine no 21 by 13 centimeters so eight and one fourth by five inches and the only the main difference uh with between these and the other album that i've shown you before it's the thickness of the paper because this one it's like 200 grams per square meter so it's like 135 pounds so it's lighter it's like one third lighter than uh, the 300 grams. So what I think basically is that this type of paper will be really, uh, will, sorry, <laughs> will be really good if you want to do some kind of watercolor sketching uh, that are not too much wet. Because I don't think that this kind of weight could handle very well the uh, super wet techniques, like very wet on wet techniques. I it's not my style. I am more like uh, dry and wet or dry and dry, so for me it shouldn't be an issue, but it could be for you if you like to have big washes as background, for example. So just think about it, but I have to say it's like 72 pages, so it's like uh, 36 sheet, uh, and for 10 pounds it's a super great price. And since the pages here are bounded like this, uh, I cannot move them around, so I ha will have to find a, a theme uh, to use like probably food stuff because um, I mean I like my album and my sketchbook are basically uh, connected or related more consistent so we will see my next 
thing I would like to show you. It's the, what it is here, the Bleedproof White. This one is from uh, Dr. PH Martins and they make great uh, watercolor, um, the ones that are already liquid. I have never tried them, so but I've seen amazing reviews all over the internet. And this one, it's that it's an acrylic paint, so it's super thick, as you can see here. I mean, I can uh, turn it, but it's not bleeding, it's not dropping. I mean, it's super thick. And what I like the most, I have already recorded the Italian audio, so the paper, it's already been used a little bit, is that you can use it with some water to have some a lighter effect, some more, I mean, less coverage. But if you use it with basically um, a dry brush, you will obtain a super total coverage. I mean, it's amazing. And since watercolor, it's not, uh, it's a technique where you don't actually have a white because the white of watercolor palette, it's not meant to be uh, cover, but it's not meant to cover anything because it's transparent, it just needs to, uh, it's meant to be just for lighting up or um, desaturated some color, it's not meant to be a coverage. You need something or you are very good and you can preserve the background or sometimes you just need some white ink to go on top of it and this one it's amazing. So it's like 10 pound, it's 30 millimeter, millimeter? milliliter milliliter okay i can do it it's like 30 milliliter so it's, it seems like a very small quantity but since it's super thick and you just need a very small amount of it it's going to be last very long so it's a really good investment uh another thing and i bought it from amazon as well so another uh thing that i bought through amazon is the Mod Podge. So this one I bought as an addition item on for like £2.50 or something uh, through Amazon. And the Mod Podge, it's like a sealer, a glue, a finish, whatever you'd like to be. And this one, it's gloss. And I'm planning to use it for some of my um, watercolor illustration because uh, you can put it on top of something and when it dries, it became totally transparent and super glossy. So I want to give some nice effect of different shining of lights on my watercolor illustration so I would definitely love to try it and another watercolor stuff <laughs> that I bought are these really amazing uh, metallic watercolor I bought them through um, scribblers.co.uk uh, that it's an amazing uh, UK website but I think they ship basically all over the Europe and um, it's the only place where I can find actually uh, fine text. So uh, these watercolor are very well known all over the community uh, of Instagram or YouTube because I mean they are basically the most amazing metallic uh, watercolor you can possibly think of. They are really famous for their six uh, different shades of gold palette. Uh, but since I I'm not so much into gold in this moment, I'm much more into copper because I bought my um, Leuchtturm 1917 in copper and it's a perfect match. Uh, so I prefer to buy the single color because they are simply uh, stackable in here, you can remove them, they are very nice even to for some nice flat lay picture for Instagram. And I just bought the uh, palette, the 12 color palette. Um, on the on Scribbler's website and it was like £3.50 each plus £3 for this and £3 of uh, shipment because I didn't reach the minimum so I spent £20 but I can assure you there are my best £20 ever because this color is amazing I mean the color I bought were the Arabic gold that it's I guess what you really can imagine for gold the gold pearl that it's a little bit more subtle uh, the bronze that, for me, it's basically a rose gold. They has also the rose gold, but it was sold out on the website. Uh, but, I mean, I it seems really a rose gold. I should have, ne maybe next time I will buy even the rose gold and see the difference, compare them, but it's really rose and gold. <laughs> and the golden orange, that it's actually a perfect copper color. So I've tried them out here. 
and you can see how shiny they are um, but I guess when I show you here and I'm going to do a bullet journal video so you're going to see everything but this is just a sneak peek for showing you how bright it is and as you can see here there is just a very minimum ghost and no bleed through so it's amazing I mean I just love them I love the uh, intensity of the color the quality of the color so I definitely recommend them my next item it's a very particular item my mom <laughs> gave it to me gift me for because uh, I'm not sure about the name but in uh, on 6th of January uh, there is this uh, holiday that in Italy it's called uh, the same thing like Epiphany I'm not sure if it's the same in English but and we are used to uh, give gifts gifts to the kids and uh, even if I'm not a kid anymore my mom just doesn't get it <laughs> so I guess for her I will always be her kid so she gave me this really lovely set I have this is my very first fountain pen so I've never used one and I'm totally sucker <laughs> in this so I'm gonna show you how it works for the purpose of showing you but please please be mercy and <laughs> with me uh, ah, okay, the uh, the most interesting feature of this, I guess, for me at least, is this. So, you have the fountain pen with uh, other two nibs uh, to change, or at least in the set I get, I got. And inside, if you don't some, do something like this, it's better, because this system is really nice for keep your head, hands clean, if you're not me, actually. Uh, so, there is this thing that I'm going to empty and to show you how it works so uh, you have this uh, container inside that it's basically like a syringe stuff so you can rotate this and you grab the color of your ink so what you just you just need to do it's of course after screwing back in place you just put it very uh, vertical inside the bottle of your ink and just uh, rotate this and I'm not doing it right so let's do it again because you have to be very very um, vertical otherwise it doesn't work properly and I just clean a little bit the nib but it's why every time <laughs> I forgot to do it so every time I make a mess and it's this system it's thought to avoid you the mess so I mean <laughs> <laughs> my fault and so you just can start to write so I have never used a fountain pen before recording these videos so I am a sucker at it I don't know how to press uh, properly because I use always brush pen but I mean you can have thick or very thin line and this system it's really nice because I mean you can just buy your ink and just uh, refill the inside without, I mean, don't have to buy the fountain pen refill, they're very color specific, so this one could be a very nice uh, addition, if you, especially if you are good in calligraphy, things that I'm not. And I have put the link for, for it from Amazon, I just found uh, the pen with the nibs without the ink, but it's, I mean, I guess it's nice and I will definitely try to improve it and learn it how to use it properly and so let's get to the bullet journal stuff so after the watercolor and calligraphy the bullet journal so I bought my Lostrum 1917 in the copper version I guess last year they did this uh, limited edition where you can find the copper gold and silver Lostrum probably for their 100 year of activity or something and I bought the copper because I mean it's amazing it's super nice I don't think that Lostrum needs so much explanation because basically it's with uh, scribbles that matter and Moleskine basically I guess it's one of the most used for bullet journaling so you don't need me to explain anything I would just say that it's dotted with the numbers written page numbers written on the bottom so it's really nice it's really sturdy and for what I've seen it's the pages are really great for writing and everything they don't uh, have so much ghosting they are pretty good quality if, even if they are just 80 gram uh, in weight so it's pretty thin 
but it's really nice and lovely to use it. So next thing that I'm going to show you are the pens. So I have bought so many different pens and inks uh, for the copper notebook. <laughs> so I did like the serious and good YouTuber and I say, okay, I want to try everything that I can find on Amazon uh, that it's in copper that can be match my uh, bullet journal. So I bought the these three different pens and let's start with the Uniball Signo. I have it in white and this one it's great. I mean it's really lovely and really really amazing. The color it's really shiny and metallic so because for me doing these kind of trials in these days I have realized that the most of the difference that I uh, notice between pens it's if they are shiny or matte. I mean these are matte, these are, this is shiny same as for the fine tech watercolor. So uh, I bought the Zig uh, Zig Fude Biori Metallic and it's from Kuretake and this one for me has the same issue that I had with Tombow so the um, brush, because it's a brush pen, the brush it's super soft and I have really hard time to manage it, to handle it, I, I don't know, I don't like it so much. I prefer something more uh, sturdy, some more hard tip, but I mean, it's really nice, the color it's really nice, uh, it, it's very smooth for writing, it's just, it's not shiny, I mean, it's a matte color, but it's actually, this is the copper, and it's actually copper. This one instead is bronze, I have to say, for complete information. So, the other one that I bought always through Amazon, uh, it's the Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pen, it's 1.5. 0.5 and this is the copper 252. I have to say that no one is going to convince me that this color is actually copper. For me it's rose gold. Uh, <laughs> I know is you can you may say okay if they say that it's copper it should be copper but no for me this one it's rose gold and it's really a lovely shade of rose gold actually. The point it's a bullet tip point so it's not a brush pen it's uh, more shiny, more a little bit more glimmery, shimmery than the uh, Zig, but it's still more matte than the Signomi Ball. But it's a really great pen, so I strongly uh, recommend all the three of them, depending on which kind of effect you prefer the most. Uh, they are all, all the three of them are very good. And the other ink that I bought is this one. It's the Liquitex ink iridescent rich copper uh, through Amazon and it was like five pound I guess it's 30 milliliters so it's a very big quantity and uh, it has this uh, like the um, dropper I don't remember the English name sorry but uh, I hope you get it and you can use it I mean it can be used with your brush of course so even I think you can even put easily inside the the, um, the fountain pen that I showed you earlier probably would be something that I would definitely do. So you can use it with your brush just for drawing. It's very nice as coverage. Uh, the only thing that concerns me is since it's liquid probably it will uh, soak more the paper so I don't think I'm going to use it in my bullet journal. I think I will stay with the, the fine tech but I have to say it's really nice and really lovely so if you want to give it a try uh, this one it's much more uh, glittery because it's iridescent so it's much more glittery than the metallic but it's a really lovely effect and the next thing on my list that I would love you to speak about, speak about it's something that deludes me I go through um, Artifox uh, with the rest of my order. I also pick up these two Uniposca, the white and the gold, because I they don't have anything copper. But I was thinking, I mean, I always not love uh, to put some shiny details, so whatever. I just could use one more gold uh, fine brush, uh, fine tip uh, marker, and no, I mean this color it's not gold for me. It's not even close to gold. It's more something a little bit glossy or glittery but it's yellow I mean it's 
it's not nice. It's not something that I like. No, not even a chance. I'm sorry, really sorry, but no. And even the white, I mean, as you can see here, these are the trial that I made in the Italian version of the video. Uh, the color, when you put it down, it seems that to have a good coverage, but then it just get um, have been absorbed by the paper, and then you have to go back on the top of it if you want to have a more intense shades of white. So I mean, I just prefer to stay with my uh, Uniball Signal white gel pen and to use the bleed proof white for uh, uh, bigger areas, because uh, I mean, it's not something that it's worth for me but maybe it's something that you like. <laughs> so I just want to say something about it as well. And then I bought this for my bullet journal uh, through Amazon. It was like 88 pound, eight pound 99. And this one you were never going to see me use because it is butterfly and I am so scared by butterflies. So if you want, just write it in the comment. <laughs> Someone can have it, mine, no problem. But I'm going to use this five and I'm going to use them this way uh, I have already put them on some acetate because I can put them inside my notebook and as you can see the color it's a very good it's not perfect exactly the same but it's a very good match and they are really nice I really like them so I thought it was a good deal probably you can find something cheaper through uh, Aliexpress but I want something right now and my last but not least uh, for importance, article that I bought was the Crayola Super Tip Washable Markers. I bought the 50 pack. There was like eight pounds, seven pounds, 99 or something through Amazon. And I'm in love with them. Um, I bought them because when I decided to start bullet journal properly this year, I thought that I would love to have some color to put inside. So I'm not a fan of watercolor inside the bullet journal because they usually soak the paper too much and then it starts to warp and I don't like the effect. So uh, when I want to do some watercolor stuff, I would do on watercolor paper and then attach to my uh, lodge room. But I want something that I can use for drawing in it. So the Tombow, I am sorry. I know that I'm going to say something that for the most of the people it sounds like uh, uh, a curse or something that you should even mention, but I don't like Tombow. I tried to use them when I was in art art school and I've always prefer uh, letter set Pantone and Copic. I mean, there is something that just doesn't click for me with Tombow and they cost so much. So I decided that there is no point in investing on something that I already know that probably I should have issues with and I decided to go with the Crayola. And the Crayola has one of the brightest side is that they cost very little. The other brights on the, even on the bright side, we can say that they are very nice for uh, brush, not brush, but I mean some kind of calligraphy, because depending on how you change the uh, angle, you can obtain a very nice calligraphy effect. I've basically this is my first trial, so I've always use brush pen so I'm not so good into it but I'm no for sure that I'm going to improve and because they are really easy to use I mean you can obtain thin line thick line they are really nice and beside of that there is another very interesting features they had that I'm going to show you so since they are washable because they are made for kids they dissolve with water that means that you can just put some on some plastic or ceramic surface like a dish or uh, this kind of palette and just using a little bit of water you can use them for I mean this brush it's so dirty what the heck? it's super dirty I don't know what I picked up earlier but you can use them for water coloring so I mean this is an amazing features because if you have never tried to watercolor and you want to see how if you like watercolor how it could be and all this kind of stuff i guess this is one of the best way to start out because they are super cheap and using them on this kind of surface you don't um, risk to damage the tip 
so it's really nice and I mean the watercolor effect it's really nice so if you want to give it a try to the watercolor world without starting to buy extra paint I guess that for eight pound you can just buy the Crayola so you can have something for calligraphy something for coloring your um, bullet journal and even some coloring something for trying out with the watercolor so it's a win-win-win for in my opinion and there is something else that I would like to suggest you because uh, Crayola has one limit they are made for kids so they are not color coded but I th for me the having a color chart or something to refer to it's always a need because I mean, it's easier if you try out some color, then you can decide, okay, I want to do the same color of this month, or I want to change color, and you don't have every time to test it out. So I looked through the internet to find if there is something like a color chart for Crayola, and I found this. It's made by Linda Wright, and she has this company that it's Linda Lu Enterprises. I found her through um, YouTube, so I will be putting the link in the info box. Uh, the um, her uh, web um, the link to her video okay can I say it the link to her video and in her description box you can find the PDF it's an A4 I printed on A5 side so I can put it in the inner pocket of my large room I know there is a lot of people like to make very nice uh, color chart in their um, bullet journal but since I don't love so much doing over and over the same thing again. I prefer to have this, that if it's, even if it's not the fanciest, it's super professional and it's re really well done because she explains you in the video how to divide your color in 10 groups, violet, pinks, reds, oranges, yellows, greens, aqua, blues, tans, and ne neutral. And then how to uh, put down the color starting from the lighter to the darkest and how to name it so you can just after using a sharpie you can just put the color code here so I'm sure that this one is this one and I think it's I mean it's brilliant it's something really simple to do and I think it's something that it's time saver big deal so this is everything that I want to, that I bought that I want to show you so I hope this video would help have help you uh, if you want to buy some of this stuff um, please, please let me know what you think about it because I know that buying um, art supplies or even bullet journal supplies could be really expensive and I understand that it's difficult to buy, especially online or even if you go to a shop but you cannot try them properly. Uh, sometimes it's difficult to know what to buy and doesn't waste your money. So since I don't think that anyone likes to waste their money, if there is something that I have bought and you want me to want me to try in some different ways or for some specific use uh, I would be love to help you out and do videos or Instagram videos or whatever to help you out and because I think that I mean we have these great things that are social medias that can help us with all this lovely stuff uh, and to solve some kind of issues that before you have just to go to the shop buy and pray that it's what you need and now we can uh, have some kind of feedback from other people's experience so please if I can help you out with something that I have already purchased let me know this week I will be uploading so many videos because I want to upload uh, in my explanation videos my bullet journal stuff videos and even my February spread videos for bullet journal so um, I hope that you would uh, stay with me subscribe to the channel uh, comments and let me know what you think and see you soon bye